mixed children is the bridge between white people and like minorities or like oh they're gonna like save the world that's kind of like we're just people mm. just like everybody else we're not the bridge between like some magical mystical realm and like the world of white people <laughs> it, like, it doesn't work like that which culture are you more interested in what a stupid fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so, like, it's so wild when people ask me that, I think. Because it's kind of like, oh, yeah, so, like, pick which half of you you're more comfortable with. Yeah. You know? Like, why should we have to pick? Exactly. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I guess, for me, it's, like, it's an interesting one because, obviously... I grew up in the north, but I grew up with my mom, so like I don't really know my dad's side like, of the family at all. Mm, so like, same with me. It's just it's like then it's an even more difficult conversation, and it's yeah, it's uh, it's frustrating when people ask and you have to yeah. pick. I don't understand why. Like, mm. it's not like any one culture is more interesting than the other either. Yeah, like co all countries have really rich cultures that you can be equally interested in. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, you shouldn't have to pick between them. Both are as equally as valid as the other. So. You look exotic. <laughs> I've got this a couple of times on Tinder. <laughs> oh, stop. It's like... Uh, it's weird. It's the bane of my actual existence. Like, the amount of people, like, especially... Like, it's it's fine, I think, if you, like... Well, not fine, but it's not as bad if you get it online. Because you can be like, ha, block. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, like, I don't know how many times I've been out. Like, I've been in the George or whatever, and someone's like... My God, like I love your skin color. You're so exotic. I'm like, do you want to eat my entire ass? <laughs> off, like, I mean, like, what's like, what does that even mean? Like, oh, you look different, therefore yeah. I want you. Like, it's weird. Where'd you get off? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. Um, I've definitely gotten it before, but it also it just makes me feel. Yeah, it just makes me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, really mm. uncomfortable. Like, it's exactly. Kinda, yeah, yeah, just. And it's always men as well. Like yeah. a lot of the time, women are a lot more like they're a bit more like, oh, like you look like really interesting. Like they try to skirt around, but men are just like straight in, no kissing. They're all like, here, you look, you know, yeah. you look exotic. And they think it's like, and they think it's a, a like a compliment, mm, yeah. you know. Like when people compare your skin color to uh to like food. Like, yeah. Oh, you're like you're such a beautiful like mocha or caramel well, or whatever. That's disgusting. So, like, that is disgusting. <laughs> delete this. Yeah. Delete immediately. Mm -hmm. You're like Hannah Montana. You have the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, let me just remove my long wig. Yeah. Like. like, I guess the only thing I'd say to that though is, like, in a positive spin, I feel like you, in a way you kind of do, like, when we talk about culture and having like multiple cultural identities, like, to me, that's amazing. Like, that's amazing. That's yeah. the best part about yeah. it. It's about being able to like take elements from from everything and own all of it. So like, mm. yeah, and, and uh, like, well, I don't know what Hannah Montana to be fair, <laughs> but um, but for me, it's like it's it's a positive thing. Like, mm. I, yeah. I love the complexity and the richness of mm. it. Like, yeah. it is a bit of a simplistic way of looking at it. Yeah, like, yeah. you can just like you can just switch like. Like, it's not like you, I can just switch between, like, Chinese and Irish. I can't just, like, totally remove, like, my face and put on a new one. Mm. But it's in that sense a bit simplistic. But, you know, it is nice having the two cultures to lean into and yeah. to explore. My name is May. I'm from Cork. I'm from a small little village called Caragadrahid. Uh, I'm 19 years old, and I'm currently studying architecture in Cork. Uh, my mom is Chinese, and my dad is Irish. I, I think when I was younger, I didn't really have a concept of race. Like I always knew I was half Chinese because we would celebrate Chinese New Year's and we'd get, and you know, our mom would speak Chinese around the house a small bit, but I wasn't really until I got older, I think, and that people started saying things that made, really made me realise that, you know, something was different here. You're not black, Asian, or whatever minority enough. I've definitely felt it like internally. Mm. Like I never, I never, nobody's actually ever said to my face, but definitely sometimes I feel like I'm taking up space where I shouldn't be, like in conversations. Like, like some, like especially with um, when coronavirus was happening last year, I did my Leaving Cert art, art project on um, 
kind of like on coronavirus and like how it's like how racism has changed since then and how I've changed and like, there's certain times I was sitting there and I was thinking like am I victimizing myself like am I looking too deep into it or like am I just being like sensitive like overly sensitive and I, like am I too white for this like have I experienced enough racism to be angry about this and to be like pouring like passion into a project but it was a really it was really was a passion project for me it's one of the mo one of my most favorite art pieces I've ever done so, and I think it was powerful, and I think it would make people think they saw it. So, it is definitely a struggle internally to like, just kind of like, am I, is it, like, am I valid to be in this conversation, to be taking up this space? But at the end of the day, people see, say me how to me in the, in the streets. People ask me where I'm from, and be surprised when I say I'm from Carrigadrahid, I'm from the, the middle of nowhere in, in County Cork. So at the end of the day, I think I am, I think I am Asian enough to be talking about racism because I have experienced it in Ireland. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I, I, it's, for me, it was kind of similar, like when, when everything kind of kicked off with Black mm. Lives Matter and there was so much going on last year and I felt so strongly about it, but at yeah. the same time had this like crazy internal conflict of like, mm. is it okay for me to be, yes. you know, like talking about this and, put, you know, like, do, am, am I black enough? Like, is it all right? And, uh. Yeah, I think that's like that's one of the things that comes with being biracial. Like it's it is complex and it can mm. be a kind of internal battle yourself where you're like, mm. Am I allowed to? But then as you say, like I'll walk into a room and speak to someone and they they'll still be surprised that, yeah. you know, I'm from Belfast. They don't yeah, the accents are like, Whoa. Yeah, like, Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so like it's yeah, it's definitely I definitely do think it's an internal um battle a lot yeah. a lot mm. of the time. So my name is Ashley, Ashley McCaffrey. I am from originally from a little town called Hollywood, just outside Belfast. Um, not the very exciting one in America, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and my background is um, so my mum is Irish. Um, I was born and raised in Belfast, um, and my dad's side of the family is Jamaican. Um, so I'm mixed mixed heritage biracial. I grew up. Uh, my grandparents lived just around the corner from me, so I kind of grew up um, around them and my mum. Um, I played a lot of Irish music. Um, Belfast is a pretty interesting place to grow up in. Um, a little bit divisive, let's say. Um, you can't speak for us. You don't know your ethnic side. Ow, that one hurt. Yeah, like, um, so I have some ongoing beef oh. <laughs> with, with just one person in particular who seems to think that mixed race people who are mixed with white are just white mm -hmm. and so we can't speak on issues like you know the the racism that asian people are experiencing over coronavirus like black lives matter like anything like that and it's like you know it's like i said earlier if someone says a slur to me in the street and i'm like oh no i'm actually half white they're not gonna be like oh my god what a big misunderstanding yeah. no they're gonna double down um and so like and not only that, but it's so subjective as well. Yeah. Like, it's, like, I could sit here and be like, you know what, like, yeah, I do feel more white. I don't, but I could sit here and say that. And that would be as valid as, you know, if I had a twin, they sat there and said, oh, like, I feel more black. That's, that's for them to decide. That's not for me or for you or for anyone else. Yeah. And what does that even mean? Like, well? Exactly. Do you know, like, it's just, I don't know, like, there's a whole part to it where I feel like, People can just go through life and not even ask themselves the question. Like they can just comfortably work away. Um, and like I probably could have done that as well to a point. Like if I look at my upbringing and you know my friends that I've grown up around, like my upbringing is predominantly white. Let's put it that way. And like it's only by me seeking out other people and wanting to get more exposure to diverse cultures and backgrounds that like I learn more about myself like every person you meet is a reflection of you so I just don't know how someone can say like you know you, know, you, you can't speak about this you can't speak about that like it's like who are you to define it how do you define it like I, don't mm. I definitely that. think there are like situations when when some like mixed people, mixed people should speak on it more, and then maybe other situations when non-mixed people should speak on it more. For example, like colorism, you know, if they're mixed up white and you're lighter skinned, and you want, you left, definitely want to let like, darker skinned people, it's like you know, take to the foreground and they like, say their experiences. They obviously have worse experiences with colorism mm. than light skinned people do. But when it comes to racism, 
if you're not, if you don't look 100% white, you're going to get racism no matter what, no matter if, no matter how much white you're mixed with. So when it comes to racism in general, mixed people should be allowed to speak on it because we also experience racism. <laughs> Your white side is showing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, like my dance moves aren't as crazy as I want them to be. Like, you know, it's, like, it's another one of those things where it's like, you know, I think it's safe to say, like, we've all had more predominantly white yeah. upbringings. Yeah, um, and, like, obviously that's going to show then in our day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Um, in the same way that if someone has had, uh, like, a more... I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, a, I suppose, if someone has only been around, you know, gay people their entire yeah. lives, yeah. then even if they're straight, they're going to for most intents and purposes, act like what people would assume a stereotypical mm -hmm. gay person would act like. Um, and like to say like, oh, like you do that so white or like, oh my God, that's so black. It's like, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, who are you to say that to me? Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, um, not to mention like this, like that could be such a sore spot mm -hmm. for someone. Yeah. Like... For like for me, I'll I'll just point and laugh at you, uh, and I'll uh, like I'll literally just say like who who the fuck are you to say that to me like, um, but like for other people that could that could ruin their day that could that could send them down into a spiral that yeah. could be like that could be their thirteenth reason yeah. why you know my name is Ave, um, I uh, grew up in Mayo uh, in a tiny little village called Bahola, um, like. It was uh, me, my dad, who's Irish, my mother, who was uh, Nigerian. Um, and so that was interesting, question mark. I find kind of living here kind of like a catch-22. Because it's like, yes, I'm Irish. Yes, I grew up here. But people don't really guess that by looking at me, you know? Um, even when I open my mouth, people are like, and are you... American? I'm <laughs> like, no, I'm a fucking bogger. Like, fuck off. Um, wait, that's your insert white parent. I used to get such dirty looks walking around with my dad. Like, I was like, I was raised just by my dad, my Irish dad, and people used to give us such funny looks walking <laughs> around with like me and my brother, two little black babies, just like talking on behind him, and him just like, come children, you know. <laughs> Um, especially like growing up in Mayo, like I didn't meet another black person, f like that wasn't part of like my nuclear family for years. Mm. Uh, like it wasn't until I left Mayo actually, wow. uh, when I was 10. Um, so like, yes, it is strange to see, I suppose, in a sense, if you're not used to it, mm. but like, you know, it's not uncommon. It's yeah. not unusual. Um, and I think the sooner people get it into their heads that, you know, people can be so diverse, yeah. especially in Ireland, like in the last 20, 30 years, Ireland's become so much more diverse. Yeah. Um, and so like to think in the kind of like the white centric way around like parenthood or um what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> something uh, around like parenthood then family. yeah like, around family conscience. yeah exactly then you know that's becoming like it's always been incorrect yeah. but now it's becoming more blatantly incorrect yeah. 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 um yeah and i think just like another way to think that as well is um, it's like that piece about being insensitive. Like if you were, if you if you framed it in a different way, and you knew, let's let's put it the other way and say that somebody was adopted, and that was their adoptive mm -hmm. parent, and you questioned that, and you find out, you would be like, oh, like oh god, like I'm mm -hmm. so sorry, but why is that not viewed the same way as yeah. questioning? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that to me is a clear kind of like if you said that to most people, they'd be like, oh god, yeah, that's god, sorry, I asked, kind of like yeah. you know, like that's and I just to me it's the same kind of thing, like questioning. 
that my parent like yeah. Yes. I, I feel like, like I've just never gotten that question because I just got so used to telling people my mom's Chinese and my dad's white because mm. people just always be asking. So I, I, I always say, Dad's from Cork, Mom's from Beijing. So I never got that question because I just got into a routine of just letting people know because I guess I just don't want the question. Mm. You see, I I like to have fun with the question though. <laughs> like when someone's like, oh, where are you from? I always go like, oh yeah, I'm from Mayo. And I like to see them sweat, you know? <laughs> like I want to, like I want them to think about why they're asking me that, you know? Because then when they're like, oh, because then they think they get smart and they're like, oh my God. So yeah, so like where are your grandparents from? I was like, yeah, like my grandparents are Irish on my dad's side and my, they're English on my mother's side. And then they're like... So yeah, they they trying to do. Yeah, they trying to do. Yeah, they they trying to do mental gymnastics instead of uh, to like think of a way of like okay, but why do you look like that? <laughs> you know, um, and I just think it's so funny that people will go to such lengths mm. yeah, to so try and yeah, yeah, and it's like realistically, it's none of your business. Yeah. You know that that could be my first answer, yeah. but you know, I think for the most part, like. Any question like that, or any of the questions that have been asked today, can be a learning experience for someone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and like, it isn't my job to be your teacher. The yeah. internet is free. It's you know how to read, yeah. most likely. Um, <laughs> but like, it can still like, even if it isn't give them all the answers, it can push them onto the yeah. right path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree, and I think. A lot of it is to do with context and how it's asked, but also that can't be an excuse either. Mm. Like, you know, I'm just curious this one. It's like, it's exhausting. Mm. Like, imagine going out every day and somebody constantly asking you to explain yourself, yeah. explain why you look that way, explain why, like, oh, you're Irish, but like, okay, but where are you from? Like, how does that work? And you're doing that over and over and over again. The 50th person that asks you, I want to be like, I'm done. And yeah. they're like, oh, it's just like, you know, I was just curious. And I was like, that's cool. But like, think of the fact that like a hundred other people could ask me this and I'm actually sick of having to explain what my background is just because you're curious and I mm. get that you think that's coming from a good place but I'm actually tired of answering the questions so yeah it's like, like that that to me is a learning like if you're that person like to have a think about exactly what you said mm. why are you asking the question and like even if you think it's okay like like why should that person have to answer to you we should start charging. Yeah. Every time someone asks, we should just go like, don't sell yourself. Right? <laughs> well, you yeah, yeah, it's better. <laughs> That's better. better. I'll be rich. I'll be so rich. Oh, stop. <laughs> but it's, it's like, I might be the first Asian person you met today, but you are the 100th white person I've met today. So mm. just in perspective, it's yeah. just, it's so different from like, the two sides. It's just exhausting. I think... A, a mistake that a lot of people make is saying that like oh mixed children is the bridge between white people and like minorities or like oh they're gonna like save the world that's kind of, like we're just people mm. just like everybody else we're not the bridge between like some magical mystical realm and like the world of white people <laughs> it, like, it doesn't work like that you got like we can't be like like you know just like holding hands and like holding and like just kind of like guiding people over the line of from racist to not racist they gotta put in that work themselves and just treat us like human beings instead of like you know spiritual guides or something <laughs> you know what i mean like we're not we're not gonna save the world yeah like sure there might be more mixed kids in the future but lots of mixed parents oh, sorry lots of mixed kids have racist parents just because the kid is mixed doesn't mean the parents are not racist it just means that they got their whole yeah. one time <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, it's just about putting in the work themselves and just doing research and like making sure that if you're asking somebody a question, they're open to answer instead of just stopping something stream and being like, hey, I want to ask you a question. Like there are loads of people online. There are loads of like chat chat rooms and like articles and Instagram pages and influencers who are answering these questions every single day that you can ask instead of just asking like your friend or your neighbor or your classmates. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's, like pretty much what I was gonna say about the asking part is like there's loads of resources out there. Like go and look it up, educate yourself, try and get a better understanding of different pers perspectives, whether it's like watching these type of discussions or yeah, just engaging, but like don't just walk up to someone, whether it's your friend or not, and start asking them questions to educate you. Like, as I said, like have a bit of perspective about what they might be going through and the fact they may have had to have this conversation 
multiple, multiple times and might kind of be over it at this stage. So yeah, I just say, yeah, look for, you know, resources and, and, and really try and get a better understanding of like the other people who are existing around you, I guess. Like, I suppose I would say, think about your intention and everything that you do. Because, like, if you if you want to start asking someone, like, people like us, about our experiences, maybe start thinking more about your own experiences yeah. and think about, you know, maybe perhaps the, pri- the privilege that that's afforded you or in a situation where, like, you might have had a good time or you might have gotten away with something or whatever and someone else who doesn't look like you mightn't have done the same um you know like i think that part of doing the work is working on yourself um and really thinking about who you are and how you fit into the world instead of before you start asking who other people are how they fit into the world and like sometimes, even if, you, even if you think your intentions are good, you still might be rude. Or just, even if it's by accident, you still might be asking the wrong question or asking it in the wrong way. So if, you, if so, I don't think sometimes people go in with good intentions and then they get like they get like a refusal or the people just don't engage with them and they kind of just get defeated and just kind of stop. But you just have to just keep going and just try to learn from your experiences and try to be more... I don't know, observant, because you can tell when people are open to questions and you can tell when they're not. It's very easy to tell because they will let you know. So if you, even if you go in with good intentions, you just have to remember sometimes the, your question won't be answered, no matter how noble you think you are. We have such a unique perspective on what it is to grow up Irish. But no one wants to talk about it because that would acknowledge that I am an Irish person. But yeah, very kind of like, there's a big piece around, you know, culture and, and kind of who you belong to and where you belong to and, and all that kind of stuff growing up in Northern Ireland. So yeah, it was it was interesting. I think Ireland as a country has a very unique relationship with culture, considering like, you know, all the colonisation and all the struggles have been through in the last 800 years. So I think that as a country, we should really be more conscious of other people's cultures and how they're trying to preserve theirs even though they're in a different country or perhaps they've been colonised. Um, and I think that as we have to work together to be better at that in the future and now.